Well, I decided to go ahead and beat all the stuff out that I could, all the bangs and dings and pings, before I took the paint off of this side. That way, if it had to lay on the floor and get wallered around on the concrete, at least it won't scratch my perfect paint. That's a joke. Uh, so anyway, I've tried to bang out as much of, I, of it as I can. This dent here is behind uh, that wall that's on the back side right here. So unless I cut that out, and I may cut that out and redo it, I probably am not going to get that one out. We'll see how, of all the other issues with the truck, that's, that's the least of my worries. But if I decide to cut that out, uh, I'll bang that dent out, and I'll probably bang this one out as well before I put it back in. This section here, I just plan to cut out, and I'll come up with something, get another gate or something to weld back in there. Uh, I may be able to wire wheel some of that up, uh, but it looks pretty far gone. I've banged on it quite a bit with a hammer. It's pretty solid. It's just very, very rusty. Uh, to get this welded back together, I'll either have to patch panel it or... Um, just try and tack it along this section here. And again, I need to get this off and soak it. I doubt it's going to come back. It's pretty rusty. And then I think here, the reason the paint is off here and here, if you notice the discoloration, I don't know if you can see it, there's a glare there. I think someone has heated and tried to get those off before because you can see how this kind of goes to a green. So that's classic. That's been hot. Someone's tried to probably get that off of there before. Anyway, it's as straight as I'm going to probably ever get it. If you look down the... Got a little bit of a dip right there. Get that real quick. But for the most part, it's pretty straight. That's creating an optical illusion. But get that one before I call it quits. But it's pretty good. And there's one right here could probably bang out as well right there but it looks a lot better than it did <clears throat> and whoever painted it before either this is a deck lid off of a off of a dark blue one but I don't think it is because you can see the dove blue back behind there but there's whoever painted it the first time and did the dark blue got it actually up under took everything off when they painted it uh, so they did it kind of the right way <clears throat> And these are so seized up in there. I can't tell if somebody's welded that or if that's just, it almost looks welded. If that's just so rusted. So we'll just have to grind in there and get that out or weld those back on. I haven't decided yet how I'm gonna do that. I gotta make a way for those to come off though, preferably. Anyway, that's as probably as straight as I'm ever gonna get it minus that dent there, I might decide to take it out later. And uh, I'm going to probably try acetone again. This area here has been acetoned. But it, this has several layers of paint on this side. I scraped back so you could see. We've got the black, the orange. There's two layers of teal. I don't know if those are showing up. There's like a, almost like a robin's egg blue and then a teal and then the dark blue, and then the dove blue. So we have so many layers on that, I just don't know that acetone is going to cut it. So I'm probably going to try some oven cleaner, which is sodium hydroxide, and see if we can't make a dent with that. I did take a screwdriver and kind of pooched out uh, the areas that were rolled back in the best I can. And I, I probably will just leave that, actually. I kind of like it, looking like someone's tried to break in it. Because that's exactly what happened. And this dent here, again, is behind that double wall. So it's going to be hard to get out. I did get the hinge straightened. Except for... I need to look and see which way this pin here bends. I can't remember. And that one, obviously, is bent down just a little bit. But otherwise, it's straight. And opens the way it's supposed to. Opens and closes. So, get figure out which way those two tabs go. And that's good to go. This license plate light thing is plastic. So I'll make, I'll cut one out of brass or something funky. And just cut a piece of stained glass glass to go in there. 
there again, those stained glass glasses coming into coming into use. Uh, license plate I got off and kind of beat that bracket into submission again. So I'm gonna hang it back there for now. It'll go somewhere in the car. Figure out where I'm gonna put it. I went ahead and took care of that while I had everything out. Still got a little bit of a buckle there. And then get that one out of the side. Got a little bit of a bend. Right there. See if we can't get that out. Yeah, that's right. It's a little better. Actually looks worse on camera. But we got that straightened out. Looks good. That side's pretty straight. Yeah. Let's stop on that for now before I make it worse than it already is. And that's looking straight down it. A whole lot better than it was. Again, this is showing up a lot more prominent and down there than it is actually to the naked eye. For the truck we're working on, we're going to call it good for now. Yeah. If it don't work, get a bigger hammer. wonder if I should collect, sweep up all the rust on my knees and see how many pounds of rust we can take to the salvage yard after we're done with it. With the whole truck. Probably get my money back, huh? So, I think let's tape off a small little area. We'll just see how it works. As long as we stay inside that, we should be okay. So usually when things say wear gloves, I completely ignore that, but this is one that when we go to take this off, it's neutralized with water, but when I go to take this off, I'm going to wear gloves. Uh, let's see, should we put some cardboard around that or maybe some paper towel? It says to allow it to work five or ten minutes, so that's what we'll do. I'm going to go ahead and pull that paper towel area off just because they got a little damp in it. At the paint, or at the uh, spray, it says, Ideal for cleaning ovens, oven doors, boilers, boiler pans, and stainless steel surfaces. Let's see if it's good for taking paint off a car. Alright, it's been about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, something like that. Let's see. Uh, glove on. And first it's going to try wiping off without getting the towel damp. Let's see what we get. Oh yeah. Check that out. So it removes two layers just right away. with absolutely no scraping or anything like that. The Dove Blue layer is up under there though. What do you say? Try one more time? See if it damages the, uh, the Dove Blue. Yeah, let's put it on one more time. Try it for 10 more minutes. 
All right, so another 10 minutes have elapsed. And let's see. And I expect this to be a little bit harder because I think that teal paint that's on there is an enamel paint. So let's spray it down one more time. Ten minutes didn't hurt it. It's not getting down to the original paint, so we're not doing any damage there. And uh, spray it on. I'm going to go for a round and be gone for about a, probably about a half hour, maybe a little bit longer. And we'll come back and see what it's done after that. Let's just see. Let me zoom you in just a little bit. Let's see what I'm doing here. That's going to take a while. Oops. Get the glare. It's pretty underneath there, though. All right. About another uh, two weeks of that, and we'll have a deck lid done. I say we go for it on this area here. Let's just spray it. All of it. See what happens. <laughs> Let's give it uh, 30 minutes. Well, I am officially out of <clears throat> gloves, so I'm down to the last one. So this will be our last uh, task uh, towards this for this evening. And I'll stop and grab some at Harbor Freight tomorrow. I'll try to stay out of the camera here as much as I can. What is showing through as Dove Blue sure does look to be in relatively good condition. And somebody has definitely heated this area right here to get those hinges off or on. I don't know which. All that discoloration definitely been heated. Over here too because this is where that hinge that hinge side is. It's come a, a little bit further today, but long ways from finish though. <laughs> Welcome back. I am back on the outside part of that tailgate off of the old 58 panel that we have. Truck so lovingly named Pickle. And we've been using uh, just regular easy off oven cleaner lemon scent, of course. Uh, using that and it's working okay it's not taking too terribly long it's just that I'm down now to what I think is a couple of layers of enamel based paints and with enamel based paints that easy off works really well with rattle can takes it off really easily when you get down to the enamel you got to basically break through that first layer of uh, hardness to get it to work and that kind of is a challenge I'm gonna try goof off I know that a lot of people are um, huge proponents of this. It, I, I don't know that it's going to work. I've tried it in the past. 
But we're going to put it on uh, this corner out here and see what happens without doing any sanding. And if we don't get anything to happen, then I'm going to try slightly sanding the areas of that, um, what I think is enamel paint, and see if that doesn't, if we can't scratch through the surface enough to make it come off. So let me spray some of this on, and again, we're going with Goof Off this time, instead of the oven cleaner. See what happens. Nothing. Spray nozzle won't work. There we go. And it doesn't say to let it set or give it a time limit. So we're just gonna go for it. I have two different pads of scotch bright here. I have a blue and a green. The blue is supposed to be non-scratch. Green is supposed to be scratch. So because the one says non-scratch, we're going for the green because we figure it's probably a little more potent. I don't know if we're doing any good or not, but I did not notice those cracks until just now. So let me go at that a few more times with that. I gotta be really careful over here though, because you can see I've kind of already started into the primer, the original factory primer. So you gotta be real careful in those spots that already have Dove Blue exposed. So let me keep working at that. Does look like battery just quit does look like it's breaking it up right there, so let me stay at it for a minute. Alright, so there's after about an hour <laughs> and almost a whole can of uh, goof off. Got about probably a quarter of the can left. A uh, couple of the areas I had to kind of get down in, especially in this area where it's kind of pitted. I had to kind of get in with a razor blade and get under it. Uh, but it came off pretty easily. Um, which I'm pretty pleased with that. I'm going to take it in and hose it down. And we'll wash it off really good and take another look at it. So then all we have left on that deck lid is to kind of chisel off that Bondo. There's some Bondo in this area here chisel that off and then get this other side over here um, paint removed. So this here is not that just needs wiped off. All the streaks that are navy blue looking just need wiped off. Uh, goof off the active ingredient in it I believe is a uh, correct me if I'm wrong is a xylane, bind xylane and I work in a forensic laboratory and when we are trying to separate uh, like duct tape or something like that a lot of times we use a bind xylene to do that, which breaks up the binding agent, the sticky agent of the tape. So I'm pretty sure Goof Off has that ingredient in it. It is an acetone base and it has kerosene in it as well. I believe there are other things like a butane in it, um, but works pretty well. Uh, have to keep reapplying it, takes some time. And on my situation, anytime you get into this dark blue uh, if you can get up under that and chip an area away where you can get up under that dark blue, it comes up really easily. So I'm wondering if that, uh, I'll just show you real quick, that dark blue paint, I'm wondering if it isn't more of like a latex base. So this is really tough stuff, this green, but when I get onto that blue, blue just comes right off. So anytime I can't get through this, if I can just kind of chip it or nick it with a razor blade and get up under it to the dark blue, it comes right off. So I'm wondering if that isn't the case. It doesn't seem to matter letting it sit or doing it, rubbing it off immediately. It doesn't seem to work any better letting it sit. And I will report that you can see which one of those is cruddy. These do not work. These work pretty well. So uh, if you're planning on using the no scratch, scratch those. 
go for these guys. Let me take that in and wash it off, and I'll turn the camera back on and take a look at it. Ah, here's what we've got. Just need to rinse it off. Everything is down to what would be Dove Blue. There's one little area of Bondo I haven't got chipped out yet. Right there. Everything else I've chipped out, and uh, I think it looks awesome. So, huge thumbs up for Goof Off. I am through one can and on to my second can, so that took an entire can of Goof Off. So let's go wash it up and kind of hang it out to dry and let it sit for the winter and we'll go back in the when it gets warmed up outside and maybe see if we can't get cleaned up. I see with a good coat of wax, that is going to look amazing. I can't believe the original paint is as good as it is underneath there. Incredible. It looks great. That'll do. That'll do. Bum, 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 bum,